Hi friends, it's about 7.30 a.m. now and I'm ready to get my gardening done for the day. It's really hot in Pennsylvania now, so I like to get out here straight away, take care of the Japanese beetles, the deadheading. I have some new hydrangeas to put in the garden today, so I'm always excited about that. And then I think I also wanna make some pesto and some apple muffins. So today's just gonna be a garden vlog and I hope you'll join me for all my garden maintenance and chores. Let's go. So here in Southern Pennsylvania, I pretty much start every early July morning by, hey Grace, Grace says hi to everybody today, by taking care of all the Japanese beetles that love to feast on the garden. I just like to use a big bucket of soapy water and I just kind of hit them in or even just put them in by hand into the bucket and they just drown in the soapy water. And then I go through and deadhead all the dahlias when I'm done. The great thing is that I took out that filbert in the very early spring and I replaced it with a nine bark because I felt like it had become a Japanese beetle magnet and the beetles are significantly less in numbers this year. So I'm really happy with that decision to remove the filbert because some years the Japanese beetles have been so bad that I feel like that's kind of that turning point where you almost feel like you just want to throw up your hands and give up in the garden because there's so many beetles around. But this year it's much more manageable. In previous years it felt like I was just giving them a full buffet of flowers and plants that they loved versus as the years have gone on, I've tried to remove all the plants that they're super attracted to. And now it feels like I'm feeding only a small family of Japanese beetles versus an army. Can you guys see this bee right here? It looked like he just waved to us. Let's grab a few tomatoes while we're out here. Might want to make a sandwich with that pesto. Tomato mozzarella pesto sandwich. Grace is in her normal morning spot. <laughs> She's so funny. She always sits in that particular chair every morning when we come out here and she just watches me work. Gracie, are you excited for the apple muffins today? Gracie loves batter, don't you, Grace? So I'm really excited to plant those new hydrangeas, but before we get around to that and go inside to cook, let me give you a few garden updates because I have been cutting some things that I haven't shown you yet. So I do have this stand of sunflowers that we planted together. This is Pro Cut Plum and Pro Cut Gold Light planted at six inches apart and I'm really happy with that. The necks are strong. So I'm cutting them and setting them at the stand as they're ready. Right now I only have one bouquet at the stand because I'm kind of in between flower power at the moment. But that's what those are looking like. So when you make pesto, how do you like to eat it? Do you like to eat it with chips, on bread with a big slice of homegrown tomato and mozzarella? Do you like to put it on pasta? I think I'm doing something wrong when it comes to pesto and pasta because it never tastes good for me, but I do love just eating it on a sandwich or just with chips. Grace, you want to smell the basil? Grace, you like the basil? Do you want to try it? You can eat it. You can eat it if you want. You want to eat it? <laughs> no, okay. So now let's move on to the fun part and plant some new hydrangeas. I wanted a panicle hydrangea for the corner of the hydrangea room because I felt like we were lacking a smaller panicle hydrangea over here. And you guys have been telling me for a long time to try to get some bobo hydrangeas. So I found one that looks good. And do you guys feel like this? It seems like some hydrangeas just don't present themselves well in containers. And I wonder if that makes the nurseries not sell them 
them as much. It's been really hard for me to find a bobo and I could only find a small one that looked nice and healthy. So we'll add that in. And then over to this other corner right next to the apple tree, I wanna add a dwarf oak leaf hydrangea. This one is called Munchkin and that'll fill in this whole area here. It says three to four feet tall and wide. So hopefully it will fill in this corner and then I have a big project that is in the works. And before I really dive deep into that project, I wanna to try to button up all my gardens and make them look as nice as possible so that I can feel a little more hands off in these gardens so I can focus on this new area. So I think what I might do is bring some bossa nova. Hey Grace, what you doing? Bring in some bossa nova begonias I have from another garden that's not viewed as often and just stick them here and here just to kind of finish off the hydrangea room. So let's grab a shovel and let's get these hydrangeas into their new home. I got everything planted and Grace did a great job supervising. So let me give you a quick tour and then we'll grab some apples and head inside. So let me know what you think about these bossa nova pure white begonias. I think I really like them. I think I had about two flats when I originally purchased them. I don't do a lot of bedding annuals. I do like the look of bedding annuals, but it can just be so expensive that I tend to gravitate more towards shrubs and perennials, but I do like them in mass, and especially since this particular one, which I'm pretty sure is called Bossa Nova Pure White. Since it looks a little more delicate, and it almost looks like a woodland plant to me, I think it looks nice and natural over here. Let me know what you think. Now, I did a quick Google search and it says that these are hardy to 7A. So I think I'll leave them in the ground and see what happens here in 6B. But it's nice to have the hydrangea room almost ready. Let's walk through together and I think what I wanna do next is one more thing. I think I wanna grab a couple Limelight Prime hydrangeas because I saw a large load come in at the local nursery and they all looked really healthy and were the same size. I think I wanna pick up a couple and put them in pots just so that I have them. I'm gonna be doing a, well, I'll save the news for when it's official, but I'm going to be working on a big project and it's going to require a lot, a lot of hydrangeas. So I'm thinking I better purchase as many as I can at the same time so that they're all relatively the same size. And even though I won't be able to stick them in their permanent location after purchasing them, at least I'll have them on hand here in the garden. It is so hot out today. It looks like Gracie found an apple too. Get your apple, Grace, okay? Come on, let's go. Bring your apple. Come on, I'll cut yours up for you. Come on, let's go, bring your apple. I think we only need two apples for this recipe and I've got a big handful of basil from earlier this morning. I feel like it's about seven million degrees out here right now. <laughs> I actually had to go inside, take a shower, blow dry my hair and then come back out. That's how crazy, crazy hot it is out here. But one really cool thing that's happening this year is that my firelight hydrangea is actually turning pink before it turns brown because it usually does that. We get so much rain here that a lot of times the quote unquote red hydrangeas, the red panicle hydrangeas will turn brown from just all the rain plus the heat and humidity, but it's been really dry this year. So check this out. 
So here we have firelight. I think it is July, maybe 21st right now. And I have never seen it do this before. It usually goes from white to a brownish red. And it looks so beautiful this year. I mean, that is out of this world. You know, if it would have done this, the first few years I had firelight, I probably would have purchased a lot more but I've never been able to see it do this. So awesome. All right, now let's definitely head inside before I just turn it into a big puddle of sweat. Pesto is absolutely delicious, but I'm thinking I might want to increase the heat for my husband. So I might stick a jalapeno in there before he gets home. I think now I'll go ahead and whip up the muffins and I'll see you when they're done. I think these muffins are just okay. I think for how much work it was with the topping and the icing and everything, I think they'd probably be better just plain, just with the batter itself. But I'll put the whole recipe in the description section below. Grace likes them. Maybe they'll taste better dunked in a big mug of coffee, right Grace? Oh, one more thing. I need to update you on the amaryllis we're growing from seed. So here's what they look like. Only two survived, but they're doing good. One has three leaves and one has two. And I just have it under my lighting system. Well, friends, thanks so much for hanging out with Grace and myself today. We really enjoyed spending some time out here in the garden with you in the early morning before things got too hot. I'll definitely put a link to my pesto recipe and the muffin recipe in the description section. So friends, I wanna wish you a wonderful day and happy gardening. Bye.